If you're about my age, you probably also think video games were better when we were kids, right? Don't get me wrong, games now can be amazing. But the games we grew up with in the 90s and early 2000s, those were something else. You could run through those games dozens of times and never get bored. As a kid, I think I played through GoldenEye on the Nintendo 64 like 200 times. And I think I played the original Halo campaign on the old school Xbox like a thousand times. Sure, a little bit of this is just me getting older and not having 12 hours to sit down and try and beat Truth and Reconciliation in record time. But there's something to be said for those old games and there's no reason to think they're not just as replayable now as they were back then. Lately, I've been on a bit of a vintage tech but make it modern kick. And I wanted my own way to relive that feeling of those games we played in our childhood. If you're into retro gaming, you've probably heard of emulation, using modern computer hardware to mimic the old consoles so you can play their games without digging through a shelf full of dusty consoles and figuring out how to connect your component plugs to an HDMI port. You can buy an off-the-shelf emulator console PC thing that's cheap and functional, but they almost always look plasticky and a bit tacky. You could build a gaming PC specifically for emulation, but not everybody has the know-how to do that or the desire to have a large PC sitting in their living room. The other option is just to run emulation on an old mini PC or a NUC or even a Raspberry Pi, which works great, but it still doesn't have the excitement or charm of those old consoles we grew up with. Plus, with a Raspberry Pi 5 running at 150 bucks, they're not even that cheap of an option anymore. The big trouble with most emulation solutions for me though, is they don't really look at home in the living room. So I figured the best solution for this in my case was obvious. I'd overcomplicate things and make my own console, kind of. This whole project was partly inspired by the flood of really cheap secondhand mini PCs I've been seeing online lately. These little machines were originally built for offices, point of sale systems, and even industrial applications. Home labbers love them too. They make great little home servers. Because they're bought in huge numbers by massive corporations, when they reach the end of their corporate life, are in need of an upgrade, or Windows 10 support is coming to an end, they usually end up in recycling centers, at least here in Australia. These centers give them a quick clean, then throw them back on the market at often really reasonable prices. You can pick up something with an 8th Gen i5, a 256 gig NVMe SSD and 16 gigs of RAM for only a couple of hundred bucks. If you've got a bit more budget, there's i7 models with expansion cards, extra NVMe slots for storage, or even 10 gig networking if that's the sort of thing you're into. They're small, powerful enough for what I need, incredibly power efficient, and they're cheap the perfect donor for a custom 3D printed gaming or entertainment PC console thing. Even better, this approach doesn't just save money, it keeps perfectly good hardware out of the landfill. Instead of buying a brand new emulation computer, we can take something destined to end up in landfill eventually and give it a whole new life. This time as a sleek little retro games console or media PC for your living room. A quick note on that slick shot of all those classic consoles. That wasn't just me dumping them on the table, that scene took an ungodly amount of planning for just one shot. I had to track down all the consoles I didn't already own, scour op shops for props, and plan every last detail from which items went where, to the time of day each shot would be filmed. It was a big job, but it was made a whole lot easier thanks to today's sponsor, Odoo. 
Odoo is an all-in-one management platform with a huge range of apps for everything from inventory management to website creation. I used Odoo's project application to keep everything organized for this project, including keeping track of what props were required when, what time of day for each shot, and each one's dependencies. I even used it to track the correct light values and motion control settings for the camera while we were shooting. The project application made it heaps easier to keep on top of everything and made the shoot day far more relaxed. I found it super intuitive. So much so, I ended up using the app to track the rest of the project too, including the editing, testing process, and making sure all my deliverables were prepared in time for this video's release. If you're running a business or just like to keep your projects around the house super organized, give it a shot. Your first Odoo app is free for life with unlimited hosting and support, so there's really nothing to lose. A big thanks to Odoo for sponsoring today's video. After looking around at the options near me, I landed on the HP ProDesk 600 G4 mini PC. This seemed to be the best balance of price to performance for my application. These PCs are available in a seemingly infinite number of variations. I ended up with the most readily available option, which came with an i5-8500T. Once my mini PCs arrived, I grabbed a couple for testing purposes. I did what any sensible person would do, immediately took them apart. With the bare motherboard on my desk, I fired up Fusion 360 and started creating a 3D model of them. These things are tricky to measure. They're full of like odd shapes, connectors, and curves. So I used calipers, a ruler, and just enough educated guesswork to get close. To check my work, I printed a flat plate with little spikes where the mounting holes should be, lined it up with the board, tweaked the positions until the spikes fit into the holes, reprinted, and kept at it until everything matched perfectly. Then I printed a set of like disposable IO shields to verify all the port locations, made a few final adjustments, and ended up with a perfect, well, close enough, 3D representation of the PCB. From there, it was time to design the actual console. This part took a few tries. I experimented with shapes inspired by the Atari 2600 and some classic Nintendo designs, but what I landed on feels more like a piece of 70s hi-fi gear than a traditional game console. Still, I think this would look at home in a modern home theater or living room. It prints in a handful of parts, a motherboard tray, front panel, rear IO shield, front IO shield, and the top half of the case. There's also a printed dust filter with embedded filter material to keep the dust down inside. This uses a cool process that involves pausing the print midway through, adding your filter material on top, and then resuming the print, which embeds the filter. Very cool. Uh, yes, I could have incorporated more powerful fans or some other upgrades, but for this project, I wanted to keep the costs as low as practical and keep the component count down. After a bunch of prototypes, test fitting, tweaking, retest fitting, and tweaking one more time, I was ready to print the final product. This whole thing was printed in Prusament PETG on my Core 1, and it looks fantastic. Because there's large flat surfaces on this one, you'll need to be careful to avoid warping. But the enclosure on the Core 1 means the internal temperature stays relatively constant, which makes a big difference for warping. You can print this whole project in PLA, but you'll need to print your IO shield in a more heat resistant filament. The warm air from the processors sent out this grill on the back after passing through the heatsink and will definitely get warm enough to warp PLA. With all the prints done, it was time to put it all together. First, I had to install some heat set inserts in a handful of places. Next, I glued the front I.O. panel into the front plate and then attached it to the motherboard tray. Then it was time to disassemble my mini PC. The only modification we need to make to the machine is to remove the existing heatsink screws and replace them with slightly different ones. Otherwise, this entire mod is reversible if you need to make a warranty claim on your used PC or anything. I screwed down the motherboard to the standoffs built into the motherboard tray, attached the heatsink with some fresh thermal paste and reattached the fan. 
Next, I attached the rear I.O. shield to the top half of the case and slid the filter into place. Once the filter's in, I slid it on top and screwed it in from the bottom. The last step is to install our little decorative faceplate. I cut this on my laser so it's a perfect fit. Just a couple little spots of super glue and it's looking great. This particular faceplate is made of Tasmanian blackwood, which I love the look of. Now, as much as I tried to keep this simple, there's still quite a bit of hardware required to put this whole thing together. Heat set inserts in a couple different sizes, screws in six sizes, and a very specific heat sink, which is why I've put together some hardware kits you can pre-order over on the Stockpot website. They include everything except the prints and the mini PC, so if you want to save yourself some time, you can grab a kit. If not, the bill of materials is available at the blog post in the description, so you can source all the parts yourself. If you do end up putting together your own little entertainment PC, I'd love for you to share it with me over on Printables. I love seeing all the creations you guys have made from some of the Stockpot projects. Speaking of which, to finish off my own little console, I installed some software called Retrobat. This is a program that allows me to organize my library of ROMs and navigate between them in a neat little interface. It uses something called Emulation Station in the background to manage all the emulators. I'm not going to show you how I set this all up or discuss the legal implications. I could end up in an Italian prison. My mini PC came with Windows, so for now I went this route, but you can also install Batacera, which is a Linux-based operating system that does the same thing. It seems some of these PCs come without operating systems, so that might work better for you. I may move over to Batacera at some point soon, but for now I'm happy with this setup. I'm using these fantastic Bluetooth controllers from 8-bit do, do, I'm not sure. These guys make some awesome controllers that I've been using for many years. These retro style ones really complete the look of the PC and seem right at home in our living room. Once everything was configured and working, I got distracted playing GoldenEye for nearly an hour. I think this little guy is a great option for a living room emulation or entertainment PC, and you don't have to use it for emulation either. By installing Unraid or HexOS, this thing could be a great little server for those of us without space for a server rack. In terms of performance, this thing handles everything I am interested in playing. Super Nintendo works great, GameCube works fine, Nintendo 64 works well, and PS1 games have no issues. For anything that requires more juice, I use Moonlight to play them on my main PC, on my TV. And by going with this, instead of buying something new, you're preventing these little guys from landing in the landfill. And you get to customize it to suit you. All up for this spec, you could build yourself one of these for about $275 e-dues, including filament and hardware, which is about 180 US dollars. And that's without hunting for a deal. I've seen these mini PCs go for less than $200, which would bring that total way down. A used Nintendo 64 costs more than that where I live. If you're keen on making your own, I've made a tutorial you can follow to make your very own. It'll only take a couple of hours to put together and less than a roll of filament. You can find a link in the video description below. At the moment, it's only compatible with this specific model of mini PC. I've included some info on the correct ones to look for in the blog post. Other versions or generations may work fine, but this is the only one I've tested. With enough interest, it looks like other models will fit with some tweaks to whole locations and IO shields. So if you'd like me to expand the compatibility, let me know in the comments and maybe buy a kit to help fund the mountain of mini PCs I'm gonna need to buy. As always, all the files are free on printables and the hardware kits are available for pre-order on our website linked below. If you like this kind of project, get subscribed. Now I have this motherboard modeled, I reckon I could design a pretty great NAS enclosure based on it too. If you like this video, hit like. If not, let me know why in the comments below and check out this, this video. YouTube thinks you'd enjoy it. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you next time.